what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1997 Suzuki Jimny. Up front is a 0.6 liter turbocharged inline three and down below is a five speed manual transmission. Now I am super excited to be making this video because I have never driven a Jimny. Us Americans were absolutely robbed of this vehicle. So we never got them here and so I am so excited to share with you this awesome little off-roader. But if you would like to submit your own vehicle, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form, takes under a minute to fill out, and I come out to you. As well as a huge thank you to Nomad Imports here in Flint, Michigan, for allowing me to take out their Suzuki Jimny. You'll hear a lot more about them at the end of the video but please go check out their inventory in the description below. But let's get back to that 658cc turbocharged inline three cylinder. Well, it shares a lot of parts with the Suzuki Cappuccino. You really have to look at this vehicle as a big four wheel drive Suzuki Cappuccino. That's really what it is. But the reason it's just under 660ccs is so this vehicle complies with the K car laws in Japan. Basically, you pay less for your car and you pay less in parking and you pay less taxes if your car is under a certain length, width, and height, as well as if it has an engine that's 660 cc's or less. So that's why that engine is that size. But don't count the Jimny out. This car is plenty capable in any off-road scenario because it's so light. Like I said, paired to it is a five-speed manual. This feels just like all the other like off-roady Japanese manuals I've felt or driven. What immediately comes to mind is the Toyota Blizzard that I drove last year. Feels very close to that. It's a long throw, but it's a very poignant, very direct throw. And I like that a lot. Last but not least, of course, the Jimny is four wheel drive and we'll talk about how to select that a little bit later on. So how does it feel to drive the Jimny? Well, it's so cute. It takes bumps very, very personally. It is a harsh riding off-road vehicle, but that's what Suzuki wanted. They wanted an affordable off-roader and that's what they gave us. And so at that, I think they did a very good job. Visibility is wonderful. Steering is very light. Clutch is super light. Throttle's super light. Everything in here is like Fisher Price sized. And I don't mean that in a bad or cheap way. It's just everything is smaller when it comes to the K cars. However, I'm 5'11", I'm not a small guy, and I actually fit in here pretty comfortably, which can't be said about all K cars, especially this car's sibling, the Cappuccino. I do not fit in Cappuccinos. So, something to note. The turning radius just in this parking lot is insane. I feel like I could do a backflip just to turn around. That is cool. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have three gauges. Off to the left is my tachometer, in the center is my speedometer, and off to the right is my coolant temperature and fuel. Basic, easy to read, all I need. The steering wheel has been replaced with a Nardi unit, so this is not the factory steering wheel, just so you're aware. And off to the right, we have a climate vent as well as our defrost and wiper options. And down below, we have our fog light options. On the door, we just have a crank for the window, latch get in and out, that's it. One cool thing is that the hood release is actually found over in the glove box. The reason for that is that Suzuki actually encourages you to take the doors off while off-roading. It has big bolts so you can do that. And so they put the hood latch in the glove box so you can still lock it so someone can't just pop your hood if they find it parked without doors. Very smart thinking. And moving into the center, we have three symmetrical climate control vents. The climate controls themselves, hot, cold, where to send it, and fan speed. That's it. Then we have our ashtray and cigarette lighter, an aftermarket radio, and the shifters down on the floor. It's pretty tall, but to be expected out of a vehicle like this, and I enjoy using it. But then we have our four wheel drive settings, which up in front of it, you get how to operate them. Now this doesn't do me a whole lot of good because, well, I can't read Japanese. So I'm just kind of guessing at what it says, but very cool that they leave that in here. Then we have the handbrake and we do have this little center console tray. It does have what appear to be cup holders at the back. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test. However, unfortunately, it fails. The seats are okay. They are decently economy. But again, that was the name of the game. No power seats because Suzuki wanted to keep it light. And so power seats add weight. You don't want weight. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. Oh my God. All right. I'm in the back of the Suzuki Jimny. Um, 
not graceful getting in and out, but if the passenger was a little bit nice, I could fit back here really, really easily. If they're not being nice, I could still squeeze back here. So it is a small vehicle. This leaves no trunk space, which we'll talk about in a second, but I could fit back here. I could ride back here if I lived in Japan in the 90s and my friends wanted to go off-roading. It could be done. Wouldn't be super happy about it, but the fact that it can be done is big, big props. Speaking of no cargo space, let's check it out. One single key. And yeah, that's what I was talking about with the lack of trunk space because it has back seats. Now, if you wanted just a two-seater, you could take these seats out. You would actually get tons and tons of space, but unfortunately, well, it still has seats, so not much in terms of cargo space. The door does swing out, which is really nice, but overall, nothing to write home about. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and right off the bat, this is not a factory Jimny color. Someone painted it. It seems as though they were obsessed with the video game Halo, because it kinda looks like a warthog with the green and the bronze wheels. Those are not factory colors, but I think it is handsome. And I think the overall design of the Jimny is very, very inviting, very friendly. You just want to cuddle this thing and it wants to just hop around off road. It's just a spry little guy. And so the looks really reinforce that. However, speaking of all of that, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think finally driving a Suzuki Jimny? Well, this car is an absolute blast. Everything in here is light and nimble and built to be that way. And it's a shame that we never got these in the state. But us Americans, we have this big idea that the larger the vehicle is, the more stable it is, the more off-road ready it is. And sure, big lockers, Dana axles and diffs, yeah, they help out, they're good. But if you want to have fun off-road, the Jimny is all you actually need. You don't need a Wrangler. You don't need an F-250 with a lift kit. This is all the necessities to go off-road. And it does a really good job because it is so light. It just kind of scampers along. And that to me is so cool. It feels like a church mouse just kind of scurrying up to the balcony. You don't even hear its footsteps. This car has such a quiet little exhaust. It's adorable. And so yes, I love modern off-roaders. Jeep Wranglers, the 392 Wrangler. That thing is bad ass. But do I need that? No. Do I need a Jimny? Absolutely. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Nomad Imports in Flint, Michigan. They are top notch when it comes to importing here in the Midwest. Do not go anywhere else but Nomad. Reach out to them if you want a vehicle imported or if you just wanna browse their inventory. Their information is found in the description below. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys. <laughs>